Hello students, good evening to everyone. So today we shall discuss about the spectral terms and spectral notations. <coughs> See, we all know that what is the reason for the spectra? How do we get spectra? Spectra is obtained by means whenever if you excite any atom so the electrons which are present in the atom goes to the higher energy state they get excited goes to the higher energy state and after some time they will come back to the origin that is the ground state or the normal state so the difference in the energy between the, these two energy levels will get you as the or will, will give out as the photon so that is what we call as the spectrum now if you consider <coughs> any atom which electron contributes for your spectrum so the electron which is present in the outermost orbit that is what we call it as the valence electron so the valence electron is the one which is responsible for the spectrum that is the remaining electrons will be uh, completely filled in their various shells and subshells. So the electron which is present in the uh, outermost orbit, that is what we call as the valence electron or the free electron, will be contributing for your spectrum. So if you consider any atom, for example, so if you consider any atom, so the atoms are divided into uh, two groups mainly. One electron system, that is the spectra due to one electron and uh, the spectra due to the many electrons. So this is what we call it, that is atoms will be classified into two groups, one is a one electron system and the second one is a mini electron system. So <coughs> if we consider the one electron system, so if there is only one electron, there is one single valence electron in the outermost orbit, then the su such type of uh, atom will get you one electron system. And if there are more than one electron in the outermost orbit, then we call it as the mini electron system. So in this one electron system, if we consider the hydrogen atom, okay, that is represented as H11. So this will represent the atomic mass number and this will represent the atomic number. So Z is equal to 1. So Z is equal to 1 means the number of protons is 1 and therefore we have one electron. So now if I excite this hydrogen atom, what happens? There is a resulting spectra. That is whenever the atoms come back to its original, there is a ground state. So it gives out some energy in the form of photon. So we have a certain spectra that is coming out. So this is what we call as a hydrogen spectrum. Similarly, if I consider uh, Z is equal to 11, that is sodium. Okay. So 10 electrons out of 11 electrons. So they will be completely uh, filled in various shells and subshells. And we have only one electron, so which is remaining in the outermost orbit. So this one electron will be contributing for your spectrum. So therefore, all the alkali metals, all the alkali metals will be known as one electron system. Why? Because, see if I consider this helium, so we have two uh, protons because atomic number is two, so we have two protons. So out of these two protons, if I ionize one electron, that is if I take out completely the electron from the atom, will be remaining with only one electron. So if I excite this uh, helium atom, and if I compare the spectra of this helium with this hydrogen or with this uh, sodium, so the spectra of these three will be one and the same. So therefore, we call that, so therefore, we call that the spectra of all these uh, atoms is one and the same, they are similar, one and the same is they are little bit similar to each other. So therefore we call this type of uh, atoms which are giving a similar spectra as one electron spectra, so therefore all alkali uh, metals will be known as uh, uh, one electron system because they are similar, there is a spectra of hydrogen, helium, single ionized helium and uh, uh, sodium are similar, so therefore we call this as a one electron system. And if we come for this many electron system, so alkaline earth metals, alkaline metals where we have more than one electron in the outermost orbit is known as many electron system. 
So therefore, alkaline metals will be known as uh, what to say many electron system. They belong to the many electron system. So therefore, the spectra of this many electron system will be similar to itself. That is, they are similar to the atoms which are present in this alkaline metals. So this is what the uh, spectral uh, of uh, different uh, types of atoms. One we have the one electron system and the other electron system. There is many electron system. So this is about uh, uh, spectral. Uh, terms. Now if we come for the spectral notation, so whether we, the resulting spectrum is having one line or two line, that is singlet or doublet or triplet, so how can we identify that means it is through this uh, spectral uh, notations. So how to write the spectral notation? See students we all know that we have uh, the uh, vector L that is what we call as a uh, angular momentum for each and every atom. So, for the, there is a quantum numbers associated with the vector atom model goes like this, that is the range or the values for L is starting from 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on until N minus 1, the where N is known as the principal quantum number. So, for uh, L is equal to 0, so we have uh, what we call as the yes state okay? and uh, for L is equal to 1, we have P state. And for L is equal to 2, we have SPD state. And for L is equal to 3, we have F state. So we all know this. There is SPDF orbits we know. But here we have written in capital letters. Uh, remember students that whenever you are writing in capital letters, it means that there is capital letter will indicate capital letters is will always denote the state of atom and small letters will always indicate or denote the state of an electron. Remember once again students that is whenever you are writing anything in case of capital letters in the, with respect to spectral terms or spectral notations capital letters will be always denoting the state of the atom that is uh, and if you are denoting in small letters then that will be representing the uh, state of the electron. So, so let us uh, take a very simple example that is for L is equal to 1 state because if you take for L is equal to 0 uh, there is no, uh, there is the, we cannot uh, take, calculate the value of spin so therefore it is better to take for L is equal to 1 that is for P state. Now let us see how to write uh, the spectral notation for any atom that is to indicate the state of any atom. So let us see that is whether the resulting spectrum will be uh, at singlet or a doublet or a uh, triplet. So in order to know that uh, we have to look into the spectral notations that is how to write the spectral notations. Now I am taking L is equal to 1 state that is L is equal to 1. So L is equal to 1 means already we know that as we know that that is in, it indicates the P state. So now we are going to write the state where uh, the electron is present will be given by this capital letter. So this will be written as a letter. There is a notation. So we have a superscript here. This is this place is what we call as a superscript, and this is what we call it as a subscript. So what we are going to represent in case of superscript, and what we are going to write in case of the subscript, that is a concept now. See, we have taken L is equal to one, that is for P state. So in case that is in case of this superscript. We are going to represent the multiplicity. Remember once again students. So in case of the superscript, we are going to represent the multiplicity. So multiplicity is calculated using the formula that is 2s plus 1. Repeat once again. See this is we have taken L is equal to 1 that is what we call as a P state. That is the state of the atom. So here for this notation, so the term that we are using, one is a superscript and another is a subscript. So what we are going to represent in case of superscript is nothing but the multiplicity. So the multiplicity can be calculated using the formula 2s plus 1. So remember this and in case of this subscript, so here we are going to represent that is the subscript always represents the value of j. So what do you mean by j? So as we know that L represents the angular momentum, S represents the uh, spin momentum and J will represent always the total angular momentum. 
okay so l will represent the angular momentum s will represent the spin ang uh, there is a spin angular momentum and j will represent the total angular momentum of the atom so therefore j will be known as the or uh, j will be taken as there is a value of j will be taken as the superscript okay now since the board is very small right now so we have to go with this so there is no option so let us continue okay so this is uh, uh, this one so 2s plus 1 is your uh, what to say uh, superscript that is the multiplicity so if i take s is equal to 1 by 2 then the multiplicity will be 2 into 1 by 2 plus 1 so therefore the 2 and 2 gets cancelled 1 plus 1 so this is equal to 2 so this multiplicity 2 will be written as the superscript okay as we discussed earlier just now so if you take any notation or if you are writing any spectral term or notation the superscript will always represented the represented by the multiplicity multiplicity will be given by the equation 2s plus 1 so spin s is equal to 1 by 2 so therefore if i calculate the multiplicity it, the resultant will be 2 so this 2 is taken as a superscript so therefore this represents the double edged state okay now let us calculate the subscript what we what we need to write in the subscript is j so there is j will represent the total angular momentum of the system so therefore this will represent the uh, subscript in the spectral notation so j can be written as l plus r minus s as we discussed in the earlier sessions so for l is equal to one state okay and s is equal to plus half j will be equal to 3 by 2 if you take the sum and simplify and for l is equal to 1 and s is equal to minus half so j will be equal to 1 by 2 1 minus 1 by 2 means it will be obviously half so therefore for one state that is for l is equal to 1 s is equal to half the total angular momentum is written as 2p 3 by 2 and for another state we have superscript 2 by because the multiplicity was calculated as 2 and now we have for L is equal to 1, S is equal to minus half. So we have the total angular momentum, J is equal to half. So therefore, it will be 2P 1 by 2. It is read as, how should we read this? The, that also we need to know. So therefore, it will be read as double at P 3 by 2. This represents one state of the atom. And this represents the 2, that is double at P 1 by 2. This represents the another state of the atom. So this is about the spectral notation and that is the spectral terms and spectral notations are very small topic but if you need to understand, if you understand this it will be a easier concept for the uh, next uh, higher concepts. Okay students, so if you have any doubts you can um, discuss with me through my whatsapp number as you all know you have my whatsapp number. So hope you like this video, any changes to be needed so please comment uh, personally. Thank you.